I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, my name is Paul Sherry. I haven't met everybody in the room, most of you, uh, but uh, we're taking this opportunity to present a, uh, a session for all of our supervisory staff. It's the first time we've done this uh, as, a, as a large group. And uh, the reason for it is uh, in part that uh, one of the results of our employee survey and our self-assessment is that we need to improve communication within the company, all the way throughout the company. So one idea to do that is to have a quarterly uh, supervisors meeting and uh, future ones may not be, um, future ones may not be uh, uh, as long as this one. Uh, but the idea is to get together and use the time to uh, learn and uh, share and uh, develop the company together. Um, I just want to say a couple words for those of you that uh, don't know me, a um, little bit of background. I, I thought I started my health career in medical care, but I, I've realized recently that um, uh, in high school I worked for a civil engineer. And, and uh, so my real basic ANTHC training came in a civil engineer's office. I did work in a hospital when I was 18, 19, 20 in summers. I worked in a lab reading stat lab slips to physicians that called in and holding down little kids to get their immunization, uh, their blood drawn and uh, help out in posts about once a week. So uh, that was my first learning. Uh, after college, I moved to Fairbanks and worked there for 20 years for Tanana Chiefs, did um, health education and health aid development, clinic construction, uh, that kind of thing. Moved to Anchorage about 10 years ago to work for the Alaska Native Health Board. Um, six years ago uh, this week, um, we started the consortium and uh, I was honored to be invited by the board to uh, help do that. Uh, I remember going to the bank with Larry Ivanoff, our first uh, chairman, with two checks totaling $80,000, and we put that in the bank and we started ANTHC. Um, today we spend that much in two hours, I think. So um, it's been a, a, a lot of fun working with all of you to develop the company, and I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about where we're at in developing the company, our performance excellence journey, our, our planning um, and resource allocation process about which we uh, grow the programs and, and generate the resources, spend a little time talking about what um, we're doing this year in 04 to move that forward, and then spend about um, a, a half an hour to 45 minutes with some dialogue about current issues in the, com in the company. Does that sound like a plan? Some of you guys can't see this, huh? Will it, ca it will cause a disaster if I move here, so I'm, um, but let me jump in, and we have some handouts for you, but we'll uh, distribute them later in the meeting material for you to take home. So what are we trying to do with ANTHC? We're trying to improve our value to our customers we're improving our organization's effectiveness and capability to do the job for today and also for tomorrow. And we also want to create an environment for organizational and personal learning in our business. So who is ANTHC? Uh, this is our uh, board definition of ourselves. We are a nonprofit owned and controlled by tribal governments and their regional health organizations providing comprehensive statewide native health services. It's about the most concise picture that we've uh, been able to develop to date. The vision for our board was set by our board um, five years ago. Uh, it's a unified native health system working with our people, achieving the highest health status in the world. And they define our mission, why we exist, as to provide the highest quality health services for all Alaska natives. Uh, we've realized in our, in our assessment work that we really do have um, five core businesses in the company, and they're not the same as our divisions. Um, the specialty uh, and inpatient care at Alaska Native Medical Center, the development of um, health and sanitation facilities for throughout the state, training Alaska Native health professionals, supporting the statewide uh, Native health system, 
and providing community and environmental health services. Those, we do other things too, but those are our core uh, purposes as described by our board. And we made it fit our acronym, pretty good. So how did we set up the company? Most of you are familiar with our organizational chart of an, an administrative uh, division with uh, five program operating divisions. Okay. The values of our, uh, were, were also set, they were reset by our board about a year ago. Um, we encourage everyone to absorb those values and, and take the time to understand what they mean. They are the guiding uh, direction for behind our company. Um, most recently, we've identified, um, we've tried to focus on what our, st our strategic themes are that we're working within, and we found them basically in our vision statement, in our mission statement, and they are these uh, four. A unified system, working with our people, achieving high health status, and performance excellence. So just a moment or two about what each of these means, because I'm asked from time to time, um, what, what does the board mean? What, what is the direction? And for us, it means working within ANTHC as a spectrum of services that need to work together to meet the needs of the community we serve. And outside of ANTHC, working collaboratively with uh, tribal health organizations around the state. Um, a, a real unified health system means internal and external. Um, working with our people, uh, again, I think different people have different views about what that means depending on which people you're thinking about. Uh, we believe that that, that includes a, a broad range of people and um, it means our customer owners the 100, I think this year there'll be 130,000 Alaska Natives um, are uh, young and up and coming um, people who will provide health care in the future. Working with the people that are employed in the Native health system around the state, my estimate is that there are about 6,000 people working in our tribal health system. And working with our employees. Um, all of this is our people that we work with. So what does highest health status mean? Um, we believe it boils down to uh, achieving the longest longevity that one can reach. That's the basic definition. But what the people that provide leadership for our companies really want to do is reverse the statistics. They want to go from being the, you know, four times the national average in this and 38% below the national average in that to, to having the best statistics in the world. That's, that's where they want to be in the future if people leverage our resources and our energy together. I learned a fact from uh, Jim Berner that, uh, who, about who has the highest longevity in the world. Does anybody know? Who lives the longest? New Zealand farm wives live the longest. Isn't that amazing? So we, we should be checking out how they live and how they get their health support. So what's performance excellence given that mission and vision and structure and themes? Um, um, what are we trying to reach? I summarized those in the, in the very first slide. Um, we started on this journey um, about, uh, about three years ago, really, after our first two years of contracting and assuming responsibility for the program. Uh, our board said, how do we move to excellence? And we approached them with the ba uh, Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Program as a set of, of as a, an approach to finding performance excellence. And we've been working with that system for about two years, um, doing our employee surveys, surveying our customers, uh, training ourselves in Baldrige understanding, and doing our first organizational assessment this past year. Um, we created a core management team. I want the core management team people that are here to stand up real quick. A couple here. Great, they are sitting up front. Thank you. Um, but it's about 13 people that work with me on an every two-week basis. They're the managers of our divisions. 
um, key people in the organization that help us move the initiative forward. We also have created five advisory teams to the CMT, um, core process, customer relations, data and information, strategic planning, and workforce development. And we're involving in these teams not only the CMT members, but uh, people from middle management in all of the divisions. So we're looking at systems in these areas. So what does Baldrige tell you to do when you look at their criteria? And we're going to be handing out today uh, the newest Baldrige uh, healthcare booklet for you. But, but in a real short version, it asks you to look at uh, these seven key criteria and component areas. And they're summarized on this slide. Um, you need to uh, evaluate your leadership, the leadership of your company. For us, that's the board and our core management team and our division leadership. You need to be looking at your strategic planning. Uh, how are you structured and designed about where you're going to go in the future? You have to look at your patients and your customers and your markets. You need to uh, work with your information and data systems so that they are providing you information for fact-based uh, decision-making. You need to have a complete um, plan for developing your staff resources in your organization. You need to have efficient processes and systems for, of financial management and procurement and uh, materials management that support that system. And finally, you have to measure your results. You have to measure how you're doing. Um, you need all those components to, to do performance excellence work. Uh, this little chart uh, has been shown a number of times to describe the maturing of organizations uh, from the chaotic um, responding to problems wherever they come up. Some days you feel that way, right? Uh, towards a more um, repeatable, uh, coordinated uh, system approach to uh, improving the program. If you really step forward, all of the pieces of your organization will be aligned in the same direction. And if you're really there, all of the pieces of your organization will not only be aligned, but they'll be totally integrated across the company. That's where the best companies in the world are, and that's where we need to go to. Our um, initial assessment said that we're, we're still in phase two. Okay. Uh, how are we using the Baldrige uh, process? We're using it for that alignment and integration. What the people do over in environmental health on Burgos Street and what they do in, in ANMC um, are different work in different places, but they all are towards the same end. How do we assure that, that the work that we do is aligned and integrated? How do we measure our improvements? Um, what do we have to grow and train our staff? Um, how are we measuring ourselves against the very best? It's one thing to measure yourself against a national average. It's another thing to say, how do the top 5% of healthcare and service organizations in America perform, and how are we doing compared to them? Um, that's All of those are required. So why are we doing this self-assessment? Um, we're new. We have a very bold vision, and we need to determine where we are at in our performance, speed up our learning, uh, learn from other high-performance organizations, and benchmark ourselves against the best in the world. So in the past year, our leadership, meaning the CMT and the board and our advisory teams, went through all the Baldrige criteria. Uh, we brought in outside resource people to evaluate the responses. Um, we had them help identify our strengths and our improvement opportunities. And we set up a plan to um, initiate and grow the performance improvement. So these are what our evaluators said were our strengths. They're reflecting our views back to them. Uh, our, our strong vision and values are the fact that we are owned by our customers, our culture and our improving uh, leadership system, our work with measurement scorecards, the improvements in our processes that we have made, 
Um, some of our result indicators are very good. And they say we have a good reputation around Alaska and, inter and nationally uh, that we can build on. So all that's good stuff. Um, uh, OFIs is our new word. Everybody say it, OFIs, OFIs. And you can use OFIs as opportunities for improvement or opportunities for excellence. Um, our newest consultants say we should say opportunities for excellence. Um, this is just there are two different ways to say it. Uh, but these are the areas that they say we need to uh, improve in, and I'll spend a minute on each one. Um, having clarity among the board and among the management about what the vital few are each year, what must be done, what has to happen, um, what is critical to invest in, and prioritize those clearly, and get that information uh, rolled out to every employee within the company uh, is our, our need to do that. We need to help each employee understand exactly how what I do relates to a part of the strategic plan that helps reach our uh, vision. Um, performance management, we've been building a lot of scorecards and indicators. Uh, we look at them every month here at ANMC. Uh, we've, we've been building them in all of our divisions. We think we're way along, further along the line from where we started, but we know that we, we have lots of um, measurements that we do not yet have refined to the degree that we all need them to manage. And then we really need to use that data. It's one thing to have file folders and, and uh, be in the gigabyte club for having too many, um, uh, too much data, okay, if you don't use it to improve your program. In our workforce, um, we need to develop knowledge and skills in the workforce that align with and support where the organization is going. If we're not training and teaching all of our folks to get, have the skills to get the work done, um, we're missing a key part of the action. And connecting our performance management um, clearly to align our employees with our work. In process management, uh, this is where we've put a lot of energy in the past couple of years, our systems changes and improvements, our new software packages, uh, uh, bless them all, uh, but, but mapping out our processes so that it's clear for everyone how you get something done in the company, um, how you get an action that you need done, um, and that it's re reliable and it's efficient uh, is, is our, remains one of our biggest OFIs. Um, alignment and integration. Um, uh, being connected all the way from the top to the bottom from uh, upper level management throughout the programs in our planning and operations, um, aligning our core business with the goals of the organization. So where are we at right now? Um, we've asked our advisory teams to look at all these OFI areas that have been identified uh, and, and develop strategies for addressing them. Um, we're take, the next step is to kind of move this whole thing a step further into the organization. We're asking all of our uh, uh, service lines, our, our administrative units, to um, do Baldrige assessment within your um, division. And we're training people this year uh, all the way th out throughout the organization to try to get that done. And we want to do this um, annually. It's worth it. So. We're still at the beginning of our performance journey. This is something that's long term. Um, uh, no matter where you are, you can always move a step um, ahead. So we're going to be talking to you a lot about this in the coming year. Um, we're doing pretty good on time. So I'll pause for a moment there and say that uh, uh, we want you folks to uh, absorb the Baldrige concept and apply it in your work and help us apply it within the company. Um, I'll take just a minute and see if, before I move into part two, if anybody's got a burning question or observation about the performance excellence work. I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about our PRAP. Uh, okay. I'm going to ask Mac to also uh, hand around some index cards. 
get those out to everybody. Just hang on to them. Uh, the PRAP, I don't know where we came up with that PRAP, but it, planning and resource allocation process is the way that annually we um, determine where we're going and, and allocate our resources for it for the subsequent year. Uh, I have a handout for you to take home, but basically it's a, it's a cyclical process where you, in the middle of the winter, we determine uh, how we're going to structure our planning for the coming year. In the fall, we do our, um, our external assessment, our readiness uh, assessment. In February and the spring months, uh, we do our actual planning work for the coming fiscal year. And in September and October, as our board approves our budget, um, we get set for deploying it. Um, all of you should need to know that the consortium as a whole uh, works with this pro process, and we do it looking at all of our divisions um, in, a, in an integrated way. Um, I want to do a quick summary of uh, what the PRAP from last year uh, resulted in as uh, initiatives and priorities for this uh, current fiscal year. Uh, they are aligned with the goals that are outlined in the uh, strategic plan. Um, these will also be in your uh, final handout package. We're trying to finish uh, signatures on a um, Alaska Tribal Health System Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, for years, the tribes have um, created uh, regionalized and localized health programs and the consortium uh, but there's, they've never signed an agreement between themselves that they will operate as a system. They have a common compact with the Indian Health Service, but not a compact with each other. And so this spring, uh, we were shooting for March 17th. All of the tribal health organizations in the state, or many of them, most of them we hope, will sign off on an agreement that we, that's an MOU that describes our common understandings and how we'll work as a system. Uh, this is a part of strengthening our network objective. We're also doing a lot of planning this year. Um, we, over the last two years, we went after a lot of planning resources, and now we're doing this planning work. The biggest one is the long-term Indian Health Service um, and non-Indian Health Service um, master plan that speaks to facilities and connects service needs in facilities to uh, service requirements for the future. Um, we have an obligation to finish the first part of that plan in June. It's going to be the base, base for IHS appropriations for new facilities for the next 10 years. Um, we're also identifying all the other facilities needed, uh, like long-term care, skilled nursing, um, residential youth treatment, staff quarters, uh, these kinds of programs so that they can be put on the unmet needs list. <clears throat> Simultaneously, we're working on a behavioral health services plan. Uh, this is a kind of a major focus of our uh, uh, work in the next 10 years. Um, we've, we've signed up with the Mental Health Trust Authority and the Denali Commission to assess uh, what the Native community needs in terms of uh, developing behavioral health programs over a 10-year horizon. Also for the Native elders, um, there's never been a formal plan or a, a schema for the development of services for Alaska Native elders specifically, and we're trying to finish that work in the next nine months as well. And lastly, a statewide cancer control plan. So uh, we're trying to make all of these planning processes work in an aligned uh, manner. We have started at least two new service lines this winter. Um, one we call the BRIC, the Business Resource Center, which is an amalgam of some things that we currently do, along with some new services, to help the, uh, mainly the smaller regional health organizations and the individual tribes with their coding and uh, 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 financial management, their uh, business processing work, their collections, uh, their IT systems. Uh, to get them operational at full effectiveness, and we sell our services to them. Um, we're also trying to create a formal new 
temp agency for, for the Alaska Tribal Health System. Uh, we have lots of requests for help. We think we can use the resource bank that we have to uh, make available staff on an itinerant uh, locums basis in a wide range of professional areas um, as an ANTHC service. Um, this year we're bringing our, uh, more of our legal resources in-house. Uh, we spend about $600,000 a year on legal expenses in ANTHC. Um, it, we need to, it probably might even creep up above that. Uh, but part of our plan is to have on staff general counsel resources. Uh, Pete Peterson's joined our staff and we're adding one other so we have full-time on-campus uh, legal resources to support us. And it'll save money in our uh, outside procurement as well. We've been trying to um, address uh, key areas in human resources over the last year. Um, a lot of work and focus in, in HR and among our CMT to improve our flow of HR decision-making and support. Uh, there are more of those improvements uh, in the pipeline rolling out uh, this year, and it continues to be a key concern for us. Um, supporting some of our major divisional initiatives, um, of course, here in the Medical Center, it's advanced specialty access, kind of the key focus um, this year, helping to make sure that that effort is successful and learning from it. Um, our board set a target of $110 million in third-party revenue here at ANMC. Uh, in DHE, among the other work that they do, a new service line, a new effort in doing the construction skills training for our uh, workforce in the villages, uh, developing this new behavioral health aid and dental health aid service. Uh, we're trying to create and support about 150 new jobs in rural Alaska over the next uh, two years, personal care attendants, um, and transitioning our telehealth uh, system basically to, from being a federal uh, system to being a multi-customer uh, national and international telehealth uh, system. So I haven't identified all of them, but part of our key work is to help those uh, specific initiatives be successful. So what do I need from the supervisors? Um, I'm, we've posted this information on our website. Um, we're giving you material today, and we'd like you to uh, be as fully informed about the content and the plan as you can be. I'd like you to read your Baldrige books. I've read mine three times, and it takes time to absorb it and really get, get the concept. But if we're all using the same performance improvement plan, then it helps with our alignment. Um, speaking to Richard's question, I, we're, we've created this basically as a meeting in a box. It's a package of materials that anybody can present. Um, frankly, I'm prepared to come and meet with any, any group of employees to present this same information or specific to uh, a specific division or operating area. Um, but we need to make sure that the uh, broad uh, pictures and the overall objectives of the company are uh, provided to every uh, member of our staff. And how do we do that? How do we how do we do that the most uh, effectively? Uh, I'm looking for your feedback about how we can use these meetings uh, effectively. That's a key part of our um, of our uh, question here. We use the term PDSA, Plan, Do, Study, Act. And we want to apply that here. We, we plan this meeting. We're doing it. We'd like to study it, see whether it works for you. Uh, different day, different time, different people, uh, different format. Uh, give us the feedback, and we'll change it and improve it for you. So we're doing pretty good on time. Uh, I have a quick handout about this next thing. <coughs> Who read uh, Funny Papers yesterday? Who read Dilbert yesterday? Here's Dilbert from yesterday.
I'm going to uh, ask uh, somebody from each group to generate your question, and we'll go around, and uh, sure. as time allows, we'll address other ones. I wanted to take a minute and address um, some of the ones that came to me by email ahead of the meeting, because um, I did ask for them, and I think people that sent them to me should be first in line. Um, and I do, there's, there's a few, and I'd like to comment on them briefly. Um, one was a question on our plans for expansion, and um, and I, I understood that meant uh, to, to do with facilities. A part of this statewide facility master planning that we're doing also means revisiting our uh, ANMC master plan and our campus master plan, and we're engaging with NBBJ over the next uh, two or three months to uh, complete that review. Uh, I think the main pieces of that expansion uh, plan are still uh, viable and will continue to be there. Um, you know, they basically involve uh, creating more space within the hospital by moving some of the programs out of here. Um, on the drawing board are such things as an ER uh, expansion, um, a reconfiguration of the dining uh, and food service area. Um, we need to build another 50 beds of the Quiana House, either connected to or nearby. Um, there's some other interior uh, internal remodels that need to be done. Um, uh, Don Kashaveroff is in D.C. this week, and one of the things we're pushing for is our 300 uh, space parking garage behind the hospital that we hope to get from Don uh, Young. Um, so, and long term, you know, the plan is to add 50 beds and uh, expand the uh, specialty clinic space. We're trying to put that day further off. And more broadly on the campus, um, you know, we're working on a new nursing school health careers facility with the university over on the lot in this corner. Uh, we're trying to finish building our building this year uh, and, and uh, reconfigure um, space with that resource. Uh, the board would still like us to develop a wellness uh, fitness center on the campus. Um, so there's a lot in the long-term plan, and the, the issue is which, which comes first. So we'll be reviewing that again this spring. Another person uh, asked for an update on our collections at ANMC, and I'd like to ask Susan to comment just for a minute about that one for the group. Our target for this year in third party is 110 million. So. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, as Paul mentioned, the target is 110 million dollars this year. We collected 103 million dollars uh, last year, so we think 110 is achievable. Um, after the first quarter, we're behind on our target by 1.4 million dollars, and there's some very specific reasons why we're behind. We don't think it's because of a lack of services being provided to patients, but more um, some systems issues that we've been dealing with uh, both internally and with our intermediaries. The one uh, that we're struggling with right at the moment is that um, after our computer conversions, particularly um, implementing Signature last year, we still don't have electronic billing up and running. And that caused some uh, initial slowdown, but we've been billing manually and that's been working. What we've found is with the very high volume of billing that we do to the Medicaid office, now the uh, intermediary is backed up <laughs> because they're dealing with all of our paper claims. So it's, it's causing a spiral effect. Uh, the good news is we're currently testing the electronic billing and we uh, expect that to be working uh, within the next month. So we've been dealing with a, a series of things. We're not concerned unduly that we're uh, a little bit behind target after the first year, we'll, uh, first quarter of the year. I think we'll catch that up, but um, it's, a, it's a challenge for us right at the moment. <laughs> uh, I had another question about our um, our policy of developing new service lines that uh, may compete with other tribal health organizations. Um, we are we are developing new service lines in some of our different divisions, and we do in our tribal health system agreement uh, agree to respect other tribal organization service areas, and as a statewide provider. Um, uh, we're providing service in multiple areas and we need to 
coordinate with the regional partners what we do and what they do. Um, basically, our board has a um, has a non-compete policy. Uh, it says that if a local tribal organization wants to do something that we're proposing to get into, um, uh, they have they have first dibs on it, basically. And the way we deal with that administratively is that uh, as people come up with new service line proposals, um, as they get specific, uh, I send them all to all the tribal health organizations with a formal kind of we intend to apply or develop. And if you have a concern about that or a coordinating question or you plan to apply, please advise me. And basically if we get feedback from them saying they do, then we try to sort through the potential issues of uh, duplication or coordination. If it doesn't work out, we end up dropping that initiative, basically. Uh, but we've been able to resolve most of them. Uh, but that policy is in place since the year 2000, and we, uh, we use it actively. Um, I had another uh, question about customer service. Um, Basically, you know, what are we doing to, um, uh, to improve customer service? I'll read the quote. It's been brought to my attention by a staff member here that gets services on campus that the front end staff do not greet our client very well. She says at her appointment, the first thing that she was asked was, what is your medical record number instead of, hi, what can I do for you? So it's that whole issue of changing our frontline customer service uh, I know that we've put a lot of energy into that over the past year in terms of um, uh, working with SCF and uh, ensuring that all of our frontline people have the, have the positive customer service uh, uh, words and approaches. Uh, clearly that doesn't uh, roll out all the time and in all places. Um, another one was um, the access to the cafeteria over here through this door being too narrow. People in, if with wheelchairs try to enter or exit creates congestion. Uh, we acknowledge that and um, it, to me it's part of the dining room reconfiguration work that, that needs to be done. Um, the last one I had was about our indirect rate. Um, you know, we've, we, we generated a formal indirect cost agreement here um, within the past 24 months and the, the whole purpose of doing it is to simplify um, grants management in a, in a lot of ways. It's a way to identify a pool that identifies what the uh, administrative costs for the company are and spread them fairly across the whole company. Um, uh, we developed that agreement with uh, HHS Region 10. Uh, one of the reasons we do it is to demonstrate what our administrative cost really is and the Indian Health Service is supposed to fund that cost above and beyond the program dollar. Um, uh, so far they haven't. Uh, they've funded all the tribes around the country but only up to a percentage of their full rates. Uh, in the meantime it allows us to demonstrate what that cost is. Um, our, I believe that our indirect rate of um, about 30% for the hospital and 9.9% uh, for non-hospital services is uh, competitive with any of the other um, health service organizations in the state or other similar organizations. Um, I think if more <coughs> indirect cost information and training is needed in the company, we need to uh, plan that out and provide training and, and information about it. Um, I've tried to address the ones I got by email. If I didn't, to the satisfaction of the people that asked them, I'd be glad to revisit them. Um, but I would like to get to the questions of the group here. We ready to start? Okay. Who's first? Somebody over here. Rick? Paul, um, uh, one comment before the question. comment was that on a good day, we're two. On a bad day, we're a one. So the question is, how uh, how are we going to achieve uh, moving to consistency and integration to move to a three and a four? Uh, the question was, on a good day, we're a t in a two category. Generally aligned. On a bad day, we're reacting to problems. How are we going to move towards? Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, I think the answer to that uh, in, in many ways varies around the divisions um, and the work units. I think in, um, some people have mastered moving away from the more chaotic work to the more <laughs> planned work. Um, and I think the solutions are different in the operating units depending on what the situation is. Um, but I guess my, my general uh, response is that um, uh, com communications, uh, clear communications of what the focus is, um, uh, helping to identify at each individual level what the vital few are, what the things that critically need to be done are. Um, uh, that's the work that needs to be done. I, I hope that we're, that our plan to continue to do that at the corporate level gets um, rolled out to f subsequent levels in the company. I mean, I think we have lessons to learn from some of our operating divisions and units that are very well aligned and doing very well. We need to share how we do that more. I don't know if I spoke to the question as best. Maybe I'd ask if any other CMT member or someone else wants to jump in on how we better move from, uh, from one to two to three. I gave it my best shot. Okay. okay. Just a follow-up question. How are we going to increase communication between divisions? How are we going to increase communication between divisions? Right. Okay. Um, well, we've we've relied on a couple tools for that. I mean, the reason we produce an annual report is to provide information about our services and our um, our progress made. And uh, that's a tool that we can use for education and information about what each other's doing. Uh, we created the Campus Connector to, to provide information between divisions. Sometimes it does well for that, and other times it may not. Um, we rely on the CMT to, pro to be a funnel of information into ANTHC and uh, around ANTHC. Uh, to the extent that the division leadership um, functions in that capacity, it, it works, it, it can work and improve the communications within the company. Um, to the extent it doesn't flow, um, you got, we have problems. Um, I am open for more uh, ideas from anybody in the company. Um, and in this group in particular about means, methods, tools that we can use to improve um, cross-divisional communication. I think with um, 1,700 people doing very varied work, uh, it's not always, uh, you don't have the time in your day uh, and you don't always have the interest to go find out what somebody across the street's doing. Um, but the more people are knowledgeable about what's going on in a in a related division and work with them, the better product we're going to have, better communication we're going to have. Um, uh, we've created some uh, all staff meetings in DEHE uh, in the past year. I think those have been valuable in creating communications across operating units in DEHE. Um, there are different strategies that different groups have developed to provide within division and between communications, uh, division communications. I think you need to use any and all of them. And if people have ideas about ways to do that, uh, I'm open for it. Okay. I want to take a question from a different group and we'll get around and then we'll recycle.